In this video, you'll learn how to add the DX Vector Map widget from the Chart.js library onto a web page. I've already created a simple web page and added references to the following libraries, jQuery, Globalize, and Chart.js. I've also referenced the JavaScript file where I'm going to set configuration options for the DX Vector Map widget. Like any widget from the Chart.js library, the DX Vector Map widget can be added using the jQuery, Knockout, or AngularJS approach. Here I'm using the jQuery approach and adding the DX Vector Map widget using the DX Vector Map plugin. First, we need to set a data source for the map. I'll use the world map that's supplied with the product. This is an array of coordinates required with the widget to display the map. In addition, you can see the attributes field. You'll see further how to use it. Currently, I can run my example in a browser. Here is the map. As you can see, there are controls on the map that you can use for zooming and centering the map. Let's add colors to the map's areas. For this purpose, I'll set the palette option to one of the predefined palettes, Harmony Light. In addition, I'll denote how many palette colors to use via the palette size option. Finally, I'll implement the logic of setting a particular color for each map area. For this purpose, I'm using the customize option of the area configuration object. And here is the result, a colorful map. Now let's mark several cities on the map. For this purpose, we should define an array of markers. I prepared this array beforehand, and here it is. As you can see, it specifies marker coordinates and the attributes field. I assign the markers array to the marker data source option, And here is the result. Our markers have now appeared on the map. Let's display the name of each marked city. Now the name attribute specified for each marker in the markers data source will be helpful. To set an individual text for each marker, I'll implement a callback function for the customize option of the marker configuration object. The attrs field of the object passed as a parameter represents the attributes object from the data source. I'll just set the name field of this object to the text field of the object returned by my function. And here is the result. Now let's provide the capability to learn the name of each area on the map. Let's enable tooltips. A tooltip can't be shown because I've not specified the text to be displayed in it. So I'll implement a callback function for the customized text option of the tooltip configuration object. To get an area name, I will use the name attribute from the map's data source. And now you can see the area names. Finally, I'll show how to handle end-user interaction. For instance, let's implement a callback function for the click option of the area configuration object. As you can see, we can now select areas on the map. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress. Express.